Hello everyone, David Dean here, the Digital Media Manager for OETA, and I am joined with host of Gallery America, Robert Reed. How are you, Robert? Good. How are you doing, David? I am doing my best. Um, thanks for taking the time to join me and to uh, reflect on the year that has been 2020. What a year. Yeah. Where to a begin the year like 2020. <laughs> yeah, totally. How have you uh, how have you been holding up personally uh, throughout this year? It's been a, it's been I hate to say this, but it's been actually a really good year for me in a lot of ways. I, I got this. I started with OETA three days before the quarantine started. So I don't know if what kind of magic, miraculous timing that was, but you know, to to come in and then immediately be sent home after your third day. So I've been working from home the whole time, but been really keeping busy, you know, learning about Oklahoma art. I've been, you know, I lived outside of Oklahoma for 20 years and came back last year. So a lot of this has been a reintroduction, a reintroduction to me, to Oklahoma, but it's a lot of Zoom calls, you know, a lot of stuff being done remotely, but you know, it's gone really well, and uh, I'm very happy, you know, working with art in Oklahoma. I mean, you know, it's a fascinating subject, for sure. Yeah, that's something we both uh, share, is being uh, away from Oklahoma for quite some time and, and coming back. And uh, I um, agree with your sentiments that it has been, um, aside from a stressful and, and anxious year, I have been, uh, the one constant has been, um, OETA has been fantastic, uh, and and Oklahoma has been um uh, I, I've been surprised how much I, I enjoy being back in Oklahoma. Yeah, the same. You know, I mean, I grew up in Tulsa. I went to OU yeah. and left. I was in travel publishing and doing travel videos for the last, with, for people like Nat Geo and stuff for like the last 20 years, really. And so to come back to Oklahoma and, um, and find, oh, yeah, this is home, really. You know, after all that going around the world, et cetera. Um, has been really, really kind of surprising in, in some ways, in some ways not, you know, but I'm very happy to be here. I am looking forward to be only going around without a mask on and going into galleries and meeting artists in a more open way and just going to restaurants, et cetera, and seeing music and all this. But at the same time, there's been a lot of positives from this year. So, yeah. been a, been a, you know, a weird, memorable 2020, but a lot of good has come from it too. How has, uh, how were things, how was the art landscape when you came back to Oklahoma after being gone for so long? Were there any surprises? Were you, uh, what did that look like to you? You know, I mean, I grew up in art in Oklahoma was something that you did on field trips. Let's be honest. I mean, I didn't study art. I studied journalism at OU and, um, and was exposed to art. So you go to Philbrook, you go to Gilcrease, you go to the Oklahoma City Museum of Art, you know. I don't even think I went to the Fred Jones Museum in Norman. I lived in Norman for five years. It's crazy. And maybe once. So coming back, you know, in a way, I was kind of trying to learn from the roots of Oklahoma art. So one of the things I've done through quarantine really has been researching Oklahoma art history. And going back to Spiro Mounds, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, 1300s, 1400s, all the pottery that was made in that period is like one of the great art centers of, of that period, you know, of all of North America. Uh, to that was happening in Oklahoma? Oklahoma? Yeah, yeah. Wow, and that was cool. Right on the fort, right near Fort Smith on the border. And so it's a, it's like an archaeological site. Uh, the, the National Cowboy Museum is going to have an exhibit on it in 2021. I know we're going to talk about 2021 and looking ahead later, but, um, it's one of the great art centers of, you know, before Europeans showed up and all this, you know, and a lot of like Native America, a lot of things don't remain from that period. You know, in some places you go into New Mexico and Colorado and Mesa Verde and you have these kind of adobe towns and things like that. But Oklahoma is actually a home to one of the great art centers of that period. And you can find that art, you know, at museums around uh, Oklahoma and, and beyond. So, I mean, that, you know, to answer your question, it gets into a long conversation because I'm trying to understand the history of what present day Oklahoma is from the beginning of time. I talked to the archeologist who found a, a buffalo skull that had been painted on, that's the oldest painted artifact in all of North America. So that's like theoretically the oldest piece of artwork of including Mexico, Canada, United States was found in Oklahoma. That is and so I'm trying to, to answer your question, I'm going way back 
And also, you know, I live near the Plaza Walls here in Oklahoma City, which is an alley filled with, you know, local artists that are painting, you know, uh, every year they change it and it's just filled with murals and it becomes this place that people like to go to. So you're seeing art appear, you know, publicly, uh, different kinds of art, different styles, you know, going back from that <laughs> Buffalo skull to, you know, uh, Yattica Fields has a, a painting of a Medusa, you know, two yeah. blocks from my home, which is this stunning kind of almost Diego Rivera style kind of mural. So there's art all over the place, you know, yeah, and so I, I'm, I'm happy still learning and uh, discovering it. I went to, uh, to high school with Yadika and we graduated the same, uh, the same year. And uh, boy, he was even uh, such a genius then and uh, such a nice guy. And he has, uh, what a fantastic art career he's had. He's one of Oklahoma's best, I think. I've yet to meet him. He's a, I guess he went to OSU and he's a, a, one of the Tulsa Artist Fellows, yeah. that Tulsa Artist Fellowship Program, which is really one of the things I've learned this year is how that program there in the Arts District in Tulsa near downtown is bringing in really world-class artists to Oklahoma yeah. as part of the program where they're getting, you know, a, a studio and a place uh, to live for a while in Tulsa, but they're staying after the program. And so I've been doing Gallery America online videos where I've talked to people like Rachel Hayes and um, uh, others that, that are, are liking what they find in Oklahoma. Yeah. And they're adding to the art community through that program. And Yadika Fields is from Oklahoma, but he's one of the art fellows. And I am really looking forward to meeting him because his work is really, 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 really good. And yeah. uh, he has a piece in that new Oklahoma Contemporary, which is kind of the art story of the year in some ways. It's the new building that uh, was set to have its grand opening in, here in Oklahoma City right as the quarantine happened. So they had yep. to delay it. The building is a stunning piece of architecture. It finally opened, it's free, but one of Yadika's paintings is in there. It's just a splash of gorgeous color. And I just sat and looked at that thing for like 10 minutes, just staring at it and want to go back. And that's kind of the first thing I think of of that whole exhibit is his work. And yep. uh, so yeah, Yadika is really someone people should be aware of Yadika Fields. Speaking of, uh, of artists, so uh, this year um, you have had to shoot. So you became the new host of Gallery America this year. And uh, so maybe new to, to Oklahoma um, or to Oklahoma viewers. And uh, how, how many episodes did you, did you do five total or six, four? Um, well, uh, so the, the quarantine, has limited how much we can shoot. Sure. And so sometimes we've been trying to shoot episodes where we were outdoors yeah. um, completely so that we can- Like the Pel Kelly Pennington episode, for example. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She's a plein air outdoor artist from Ada. I really like her work, kind of this, you know, um, paints Oklahoma scenery and stuff. And so I kind of discovered her via Instagram and then we felt the timing was right because we can go. She's outside all the time painting with her dog and taking ordinary scenes of Oklahoma, making these beautiful paintings, really great, amazing to watch her work. And so we've done, I, I, since I've been here, we've done five, you know, and I started in March. And um, it's uh, been a little bit of a challenge because we try to limit anything that we do indoors, and in some cases only do outdoors. And so, um, which has worked out well, actually, you know, but one month we didn't, we didn't get to do something new as a result of it, because we are mindful of not putting ourselves at risk, putting artists at risk, et cetera. So um, I, I think it shows. And that's one of the things that uh, um, from Gallery America to Oklahoma News Report, um, you know, I, I don't know that people know that the majority of us are working from home and uh, and, and staying safe and, and quarantined. And uh, and so the the final outcome that we're seeing when when a Gallery America episode comes out it looks like nothing's changed, you know, like we're living, I mean, you guys have done such a good job of making it, making it all seem, you know, it, it, making it look much easier than we know it is. Yeah. I mean, those guys that, you know, that shoot video, you know, Dave Temez and Boots Kennedy and Ryan Lorg are, are real pros. I'm learning from them about how they go into shoot. I did videos in travel before and I have worked with production teams, et cetera, but they are, um, you know, I can say that all of us are really care, a lot about it and you know 
will, oh, we didn't, we missed one shot. We need to go back and we'll drive back and get it and make sure to get that finished touch and stuff. So it's been really interesting watching all three of them work um, and how the needs that they have, you know, and it's hard sometimes to shoot outdoors because of sound if you're doing an interview, which we've done, uh, things like that. But so we have to adapt, but, but they have these kind of standards that they approach everything. And I think you're right that it doesn't seem different despite how complicated it has been in 2020 to shoot them. It does seem the same as what yeah. Gallery America has been for years. And uh, so the Tyson Mead episode, Tyson Mead coming home of Gallery America, was that the, was that your first episode? Yeah, that's and, first. And, I, yeah. Yeah. And what? you, and so I know this was kind of one thing that you and I first uh, were able to chat about because I myself, uh, um, I think we both started at OETA maybe the exact same time. Uh, and so it's been kind of strange of not being able to be in the office with people. But as soon as I saw that you were shooting Tyson, um, I, you know, was it, it took me back to the nostalgia of my my first concert uh, was a album release uh, from the Chainsaw Kittens when I was like 13 or 14. I think I snuck, in, snuck into a, <laughs> a, a club or something um, in Oklahoma City. Uh, but it was so incredible. And uh, so I was so happy to to see you feature him. And, and was Tyson someone you had a relationship prior to coming back to Oklahoma with? Yeah, I was at OU the same time Tyson was. And okay. so I, you know, um, his, so Tyson is a musician. He's, he grew up in Barbersville and he is first in the eighties. He was in this kind of indie rock band called the Fenestration that had a couple albums that got some kind of uh, acclaim, you know, with kind of indie rock kind of journals and stuff around the country. And then he formed the band Chainsaw Kittens and they eventually got a major label deal. They did a string of albums through the grunge era. So we're talking about the 90s is kind of when they were at their peak. And I was there, you know, when they started, you know, their first album, I would go see him play with these kids from Norman High School that were suddenly his band. It's like, who are these guys? And uh, so Tyson's like one of the nicest people. And he is, he is a hilarious laugh. He is, um, like me, kind of a traveler. I mean, he's lived in New York. He lived in Saudi Arabia. He lived in Shanghai. And he's come back, like both of us, come back to Oklahoma. And so for, to tell his story, part of it is, is to, to explain that this is kind of a, an indie rock legend of Oklahoma that maybe some of Oklahoma doesn't know yet, that he might, his name might be bigger in New York or different places. And and then how much art has been. I mean, the first Chainsaw Kittens album cover, he did that, that the, the artwork. So he's been doing painting um, really throughout his career. And so he's come back to Oklahoma. He lives in the plaza, not far from where I am. And he paints outdoors. And so um, he is, does this kind of action painting where he's throwing, he's using sticks, he's kicking, and he takes re recycled uh, plywood, basically boards and uses that as that a canvas some of them misshapen and jagged and he is trying to do uh, self-portraits through thrown paint spray paint and that so it's a very physical process he gets hurt doing it sometimes and i had never seen him paint before and that was interesting yeah. um so we had fun doing that i mean a lot of that was about his music career you know but tyson is is a person that I think more Oklahomans should know his name. He's a passionate, wonderful guy. Absolutely. Very uh, I think that's one of the, um, the, oh, if you are just joining us, by the way, uh, David Dean here. I am the digital media manager at OETA, and I am joined with Robert Reed, host of Gallery America. And we are talking about, um, kind of reflecting on 2020. And uh, in a little while, we will look into what uh, Gallery America has in store for 2021. But we are discussing... Um, some of the Gallery America episodes that aired uh, in 2020. And you know, speaking of Tyson, and one thing I noticed with each episode was there was kind of a different vibe with each one. So much energy with, uh, with Tyson's coming home episode. And then um, so much, uh, you know, on a bigger scale, when you think of Joe Slack, um, Iron Man, doing uh, these, you know, really large ins installations with metal. And, uh, and then kind of something more... Um, community driven in a sense of uh, of Jason Wilson and and the quilts and and the quilting collective I believe and uh and then Kelly Pennington as we've touched about her her plain plain view kind of approach how do you uh find artists and and do you is that intentional that you are trying to kind of have a different sort of artistic energy with each episode 
Yeah, that's the dream. And that's the first thing that, you know, I talked about with Boots, one of the videographers, um, which who shot the Tyson piece is that we want the editing, the pacing, the feel to reflect kind of who the spirit of the artist is as much as we can, you know, and you do see that. I mean, with Tyson, you know, you get all this kind of grainy VHS footage of him playing shows in 1990 and things like that and him throwing paint versus kind of the bucolic piece of Kelly Pennington out in the field. And we wanted to give people that feeling like, oh, they are standing in an Oklahoma field and trying to understand the beauty of something that we normally just drive by and not really look at. And an artist can teach you to look kind of in bigger ways at our surroundings. So, so yeah, that's the goal. I mean, in, in terms of finding artists, I mean, it's really an endless opportunity. There's so many things that we want to cover and not just people that paint, you know, you can get into, you know, music or, you know, or sculpture like Joe Slack or, you know, dance or all kinds of different ways that we can go. But that's one of the things I really like that we started this year is with the Gallery America online. And so we started doing, I started doing videos primarily through Instagram, throw it on Facebook and social media to interview artists, even if you can't meet them via Zoom and just share a little bit about why they do it, what they do, where you can see it. So we're able to tell more stories of Oklahoma artists, you know, because the show runs nine times a year and there's many, 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 many more stories in Oklahoma than that. So this is able to triple that number so I'm, I'm really thankful for that. I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, uh, I think it shows. And um, what is, uh, I'm curious out of all the episodes and all of the, the footage, is there anything that didn't make the cut that you kind of, you know, hoped, you know, could have, but that's, there wasn't enough time or any, any good lost footage? <laughs> Well, some of it we, we publish. Um, so uh, what we started beginning with the Tyson episode is we would have bonus footage. And so we mentioned on air that, hey, well, we got Tyson playing music and we didn't get it to make a segment. So we, he did a song on piano, which we didn't even put as bonus footage and a song playing guitar of a song that I've loved since like 1990. Um, I asked him to do it. He did it on kind of a 12 string guitar. And so what we're trying to do is, is understand in real time, the things that we aren't able to always fit in. I mean, I wrote for a long time, I do video, and basically you can judge the quality of anything you see by the quality of the cutting room floor, what didn't make it. Because there's always, when you tell a story, there's always gonna be good things that you can't get in there. So we want to identify it as we're doing it and have it as bonus footage so that people can see the episode, if they want a little more, they can go on and see it. So I think other than that, you know, sometimes be just because of the, the quarantine and the conditions that we've had, we almost kind of wanted a little bit more time with the artists. Sometimes we would, sometimes we might see them in public and follow them and kind of get a sense of their life. We didn't do that this time because we were trying to limit how, how our access to them and how public we got with them and things like that. So for all of them, you kind of want like, I don't know, where do they get their ideas? Where do they get their paint or materials? How does Tyson find these boards, for example? Well, yeah. let's go with him as he does that, you know, and, and capture that. And so that, those are little things, parts of stories that ideally when we get past COVID, hopefully 2021, that we'll get to see more of that. More of I that. love, I love getting a peek behind the curtain, uh, kind of same with Joe Slack following him along on the process of the installation. And, and that is so cool to see. And I, I like an artist process. It's always, and whether any form of art, writing, uh, music, uh, painting, all across the board, I think it's interesting from idea to final product, like what ends up on the canvas or on the page or um, coming out of the instrument. And uh, that part of it's always interesting to me. And uh, and it seems like most artists, there's, there's not a, you know, a, a go-to way to do it for every artist, that it can be kind of different how they find their inspiration and, and put things out there. And as we, Re reflect on um, on some of the artists that, that you talk that that you've uh, featured, and before we go into twenty, start talking about twenty twenty one. Where can people uh, find some of this footage and find some of the stuff that you're putting up on on social and on uh, Instagram? Well, we've been we started the Instagram account this year, which I just call Gallery America Online, and that's it's growing like oh. crazy. It's one of my favorite new accounts. But yes, please go oh. ahead and say it again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a. a at OETA Gallery. And every day we'll post things that are linked to 
some art exhibits. So there's some news of what you can see and experience in, around Oklahoma. We'll put videos up there, bonus footage up there, interviews with artists up there. And then sometimes, hey, like two days ago was Beethoven's birthday, so we'll throw up Beethoven. And, and I talked to the, the uh, conductor of the Oklahoma City Philharmonic this summer. And uh, he's from Germany. He was fascinating. And I mean, none of this has been published yet. It's a fascinating interview with this guy. He's great, Alexander Micklethwaite. And he, he's really interesting. And, um, and so I started talking about Beethoven. I said, Beethoven's fifth. I mean, we've all heard it so many times. How can we possibly appreciate it? It almost, almost becomes like a, a meme. Dun, 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 dun. And he talked for like 15 minutes about why that is so landmark and fascinating and, and why and how to listen to it. So I, I put his quote up, you know, for Beethoven. So hopefully the OETA gallery will help people see just kind of art, how it touches Oklahoma, how it touches their daily lives. It's not for artists or art historians. It's for everyone. It's for everyone to yeah, just see how creative creativity works. And yeah, another, yeah, another across the board theme, I would say, that I just kind of realized is that even though each episode uh, might have a different energy, they're all very therapeutic for the viewer. Like it's all very calming and nice and inspiring to see. And I think that's, uh, for me, that might be art in general, uh, whether I like the art or not, um, but I uh, still respect the process. And it's nice to see, um, you know, someone just doing something different or doing something in their own way. That's, that's good to hear. And, you know, the goal isn't, to say that everyone must like um, iron sculpture or abstract art or indie rock from the 1990s or whatever we're covering. That isn't necessarily the point. The point is exactly that, to get, to understand the story of this person, why they're doing it, why it's, it means a lot to them, how they, how they do it. I find it endlessly, I, it never tires me out in any way to see an artist create something. You know, and like just watching Kelly Pennington paint in a field, something that I didn't, when we first saw it, I didn't quite see what she saw. And through the process of her analyzing it and painting it, and we captured it all, you go, oh, you know, you, and you see it differently and bigger. And she said, you know, you can return every day and see something different. You know, she could paint it all of her life, the same scene. And so just that process is, uh, I don't know, it's kind of, you know, illuminating but also empowering in some way to yeah. your own creativity and how you see Oklahoma. Absolutely. Um, so going into 2021, uh, you know, it's hard to talk too much about what expectations are. Um, I, I know because we don't know really what's happening. Um, but as far as what you um, would like to see uh, happen and um, what are some of the goals and, and, and things that you hope uh, work out for 2021 and what do you see Gallery America uh, bringing um, to the Oklahoma audience uh, next year? Uh, well, more and more and more, you know, more online, you know, more shows. Um, I mean, 2021 is going to be you know, if we can get past COVID, you know, it's going to feel like a first day of summer vacation as a kid, you know, we're going to be able to go out. And I just, I hope that the main objective of Gallery America is to people, for people to understand the art is around them and it helps them see themselves, their surrounding, their block, their state, their city in a slightly bigger way. And that you can go and talk to artists that, that for some of us that aren't artists or aren't historians, it might feel intimidating. You want to break that down. And that you can go and talk to a curator, you can talk to a gallery, you can talk to an artist. You can't, you know, like OVAC, Oklahoma Visual Arts Coalition had a big art crawl this year with 200 artists around the state that you could drive by their house and see that. So they made it very easy to meet all the best of Oklahoma artists. So I'd like to see more people engaging with art as we venture out into normal life again or whatever post COVID would be uh, for, you know, for gallery, you know, uh, one thing that we definitely have our eye on, as does the world, is the centennial of the Tulsa Race Massacre, which is May 31st, June 1st. And there's all kinds of events planned next year. And principally is the Tulsa, um, the, the Greenwood Art Project, which is involving 30 artists around there have been doing dance, public sculptures, um, reenactments, all kinds of different ways that art is going to try to reinterpret and tell that story. Um, and not just so much uh, the tragic events, the terrible events of the of the massacre itself, but also the celebration of what was there before, the Black Wall Street. And so I'm really, really, really fascinated with the first few months of next year. Yeah. 
is it going to get out and do this? How are we going to be able to cover this online through the, for, through the episode? So that's the, that's the big principal thing. And then the Bob Dylan Center is supposed to open in 2021. I'm a yes. huge Dylan freak. I'm a huge Dylan freak, and I still don't know if that's going to be delayed or not. But I oh wow yeah you know like to see wow, us what, 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 in there. what Dylan song represents 2020? Huh. Uh yeah. Well, you know he released Angled an up album. In blue, maybe no. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you, it depends on how dark you want to get. Uh, you know, dark, it's very like dark. A lot of his, well, he, his he released a like a 17 minute song this year, uh, yeah, out right. of the blue, "Murder Most Foul," and it's basically kind of a rumination of the Kennedy assassination and uh, and life since then. His career started around. That. I think it's more of a Dylan biography, a soundtrack to his mind, than anything. But that was good. But you know, songs like "Not Dark Yet." Uh, you know, uh, but it's getting there. You know, he, a lot of his music in the last 30 years, God, we're, I can go on for Dylan, yeah. it, you know, but his, a lot of his music is, uh, or his song, Every, Everything's Broken. <laughs> it's kind of what it felt That's like 2020. Yeah. That's probably a bad song. Everything's Broken. But I, um, <clears throat> don't get me started on Dylan. Yeah, <laughs> well, we could go on and on. Um, <clears throat> you do have uh, um, on the 26th, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's going to be a Gallery America Marathon on OETA um, starting at 3 p.m.? Yep. Yeah, we're going to play four of uh, our favorite episodes from 2020. I uh, really w- would like to have played all of them, you know, but, um, you know, we're, we got, we boiled it down to four of them, you know, Jason Wilson, Joe Slack, Kelly Pennington. We have a Route 66 episode with an artist in Stroud that has been painting Route 66 all his life. And we're going to be replaying those from three to five, four yeah. on December 26th, the Gallery America Marathon. And if you are excited, you can create your own marathon because you can stream them all at OETA.tv, of course. So you can see, you know, Tyson and, and the other episodes that we've been talking about today um, as yeah. well. But I'm, I'm yeah. excited about the Boxing Day Marathon on December 26th. That'll be fun. Yeah, I think that'll be fun. We will put all the info on uh, where to find that. But yes, OETA.tv slash Gallery America. Um, or go to OETA.tv and go to Gallery America's page to stream uh, any of the previous episodes. Uh, but also set the DVRs, get the PBS app pulled up, and uh, do the mini marathon live. It's fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to it myself. Um, and Robert, before we let you go, uh, do you have, um, yeah, I'm curious, what what is, you know, outside of Gallery America, outside of, uh, what is art to you? What, 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 what do you, what is art to, to Robert Reed? Yeah. You know, I think that, you know, art is, uh, is, is seeing, I think, and experiencing. And I, I was in travel publishing for so long. And so I would go to places that I didn't know people. I didn't know languages, customs. I didn't know. And I would try to glean something for an article or a video that I was doing that said something true about that place. Um, understanding that it's only a small little window to the reality of it, but just a, a little something, a little moment that someone might be able to follow. But just as importantly, how that experience kind of says something um, about where I'm from. Art in a lot of ways is very similar to travel to me. It is stepping into an unknown thing. There's no right or wrong, you know, but you can go and you look at a painting or see a video installation or a sculpture or something like this, and you, and you look at it. And you look at it, you try to get away your smartphones and all this. And just really, if you look at it, if you look at it for five minutes, and five minutes is a lot longer than it seems. And you look at it for five minutes and you take it in. What is it? Follow the paint, follow the color. What's the form? What are they trying to say? What do you think they should say? What's the name of it? Do you agree with that name? What would you name it? What it's doing is, is you're you're not going to completely ever understand who that artist is. You're not going to understand just like when you go to a, a, a foreign country and like, like know a place from a short visit, but you can play with what they're playing with and think about it. And, and it, it makes me smile really, you know, art that I don't like makes me smile. It makes me interested. And so to me, art is ultimately that just slight expansion of your mind in some ways. And you don't have to know anything about what deconstructivists were doing. You don't know, have to know about express, all, all the different terms in art. You don't need to know that. You don't need to know that. 
You can know that, but you don't need to. What your reaction is to it is true. It's honest. It's real. It's valid for you. And so you, I'd like, you know, for me, this is a long <laughs> answer as I'm doing today, but uh, art is a, is a way of seeing in a bigger way. And uh, well, I think your explanation uh, really shows why Oklahoma and why uh, OETA is so lucky to have you as the host of Gallery America. Uh, truly, it has been uh, such um, a pleasure to, to kind of join the team, quote unquote, with you at the same time and to uh, um, gallery our, our local episodes, uh, our local shows back in time, OETA Movie Club, Oklahoma News Report and Gallery America. Just so proud of all four of them, and, and Gallery America is um, has been su such a standout this year, and you've just done such a fabulous job. And I think everyone uh, in Oklahoma is is glad to have you back home. Oh, thanks so much! I look forward to meeting you in person at some point. By the way, absolutely, <laughs> and maybe even eventually yeah. next year without masks. Like who knows? We could we <laughs> actually see each other in person. Um, Robert, I'm going to let you go on that. I do want to remind people, uh, of, again, of the marathon happening at 3 p.m. on December 26th. Follow uh, Gallery America at um, OETA Gallery on Instagram. And uh, Facebook is OETA Gallery as well? Facebook, yes. OETA Gallery. No, it's Gallery OETA. Yeah, Gallery OETA. And, uh, um, and then follow uh, OETA at, uh, at um, Oklahoma, uh, <laughs> OETA OK. And uh, we're all over all the socials. So uh, you can find Gallery America and OETA um, on all your social platforms. And um, we will be sharing this. Thanks for everyone who tuned in and uh, joined our conversation. Robert, happy holidays. Thank you so very much. And I cannot wait to see what you and the Gallery America team bring in 2021. Thanks so much, David. Enjoyed it. All right, be well.